Time to travel, travel and cruise tips. Spiky Bidge, Fresnat National Park and Pacino. Early in the morning, we left Commandy Hotel and started driving north to Fresnet National Park to visit the iconic Wineglass Bay. It is about a three and a half hour drive going via Hobart. The roads heading over to Hobart were great, but once you go from Hobart to the east, they are quite narrow and you have to really concentrate. Spiky Bridge, just a few minutes, about seven kilometers before reaching Swansea off the main highway. There is a historical landmark we decided to drop in and have a look. It was built by convicts in the mid 19th century. The bridge is part of the old coach road that connected Swansea and Little Swanport and the East Coast Road to Hobart, which was an important route back then. The reason for the spikes remains a mystery. Some say it was to stop the cows from falling over the edge. Others say it was to stop people jumping to the death. Another reason is a funny one. The convicts wanted to exact revenge of their supervisor and stuck the rocks the wrong way. Whatever the reason might be, this unusual looking bridge is worth stopping by if you're driving past. Along the way, we also dropped into Devil's Corner Winery to take in some of the views across Hazard's Vineyard. They are quite spectacular, so it's worth taking the time to visit. You can, of course, also sample wine or have a meal. For you MasterChef fans, Devil's Corner is the location for the Final Six Challenge. Wineglass Bay. When we arrived at Fresnet National Park, it was already lunchtime, so we visited Fresnet Marine Farm for lunch. It is located on the Fresnet Peninsula. The fish and chips, they were delicious, probably the best we've ever had, although the price was definitely at the higher end. As an oyster fan, we also, of course, tried the oysters, Compared to the ones we had at Bruny Island, they were a bit smaller but very fresh. They also offer interesting oyster farm tours where you can learn about oyster farming and taste delicious Pacific oysters. Unfortunately, the tours were not running when we were there, but I'll put a link so you can check it out yourself. Once having crossed Coles Bay and Honeymoon Bay, keep driving and you will come to the visitor centres where you can purchase your park entry tickets a valid park pass is required for entry to all of Tasmania's national parks. It is $41.20 per vehicle for a daily pass or $84.40 per vehicle for a two month holiday pass. You can click on the link below for more details. Once we got our park entry park ticket, we continued driving along Fresnet Drive for a few more minutes and we arrived at the car park for Wineglass Bay which was quite crowded. Unfortunately, the weather wasn't cooperating and it was about to rain, but we decided to have a quick walk to Wineglass Bay Lookout, which is a 2.6 kilometer return walk. It's a reasonably easy walk on a well-constructed track, but there are some steep hill sections. The curvaceous Wineglass Bay still looked amazingly beautiful, even in the rain. This walk is part of the Wineglass Bay and Hazards Beach Circuit, which is a 12.8 kilometer grade four walk. Due to the rain, after a few selfies at the lookout, we decided to miss the rest of the walk and headed back to the car park. Bichino Blowhole. We stayed at Bichino overnight, which is about a 30 minute drive north of Coles Bay. We only stayed one night, but it's a good location to use as a base to explore Tasmania's east coast and Freshet National Park. The accommodation in Bichino is generally cheaper than Coles Bay, we stayed in a cabin in the Bichino East Coast Holiday Park. It was clean and spacious and very close to local shops, cafes and restaurants. There were also beaches not far away. The next day the rain had stopped and it cleared up a bit, so we got up early and visited Bichino Blowhole. It was only about a one kilometre walk from our cabin. We have seen a number of blowholes but this one is unique with the giant granites next to the water. The blowhole is carved into the granite shelf and sits directly on the water's edge. The best viewing time is when the wind is blowing and the swell is high. We saw the water blow up several metres and then made giant splashes onto the rocks. It's quite spectacular to take in that view. Honeymoon Bay. After the blowhole, we decided to do another drive up into Freshnet National Park before heading to St. Helens. We visited Honeymoon Bay, which is five minute drive from Coles Bay. It is tiny, beautiful and secluded. 
The bay is well sheltered, so good for swimming and snorkeling. There are also amazing rock formations that you can climb over and see amazing views over the bay. Or just sit and relax to watch the sunset. Cape Tourville Lighthouse. After leaving Honeymoon Bay, we saw a sign for Cape Tourville Lighthouse and decided to check it out. The lighthouse is located approximately 7.8 kilometres from Coles Bay. The road to the lighthouse is steep and twisty, but it's sealed. Cape Tourville Lighthouse and Lookout Walk is a flat, well-constructed 600 metre circuit around the lighthouse. We were so glad we came here. The circuit provides a panoramic view of Frostnet. It offers a glimpse of Wineglass Bay, the amazing hazards, the southern Frostnet Peninsula or Mount Frostnet, also the Nuggets, which is a rocky crop abundant with seas. After visiting the Cape Tourville Lighthouse, we continued driving north to the Bay of Fires near St Helens. If you want to know more about the best places to see the bright orange rocks and the turquoise water at Bay of Fires, why not watch this video?